I just had a customer in who they had a uh, express coin they sent out. It took six weeks. That used to take six days. That's a big deal. So anyway, uh, comments below, please. Anyone at NGC, reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you and uh, have a, you know, just a conversation. Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek, and thanks for joining me for a special uh, session of the show today. We have an interview with Andy Salzberg, the Executive Vice President of Operations at uh, Certified Collectibles Group, which is the parent company to NGC. Uh, so there are some special instructions for this video, and that is it's a wide-ranging interview, so go ahead and watch the whole thing. And then anything that you think I missed or anything that you would like to ask or have asked, go ahead and leave a comment in the uh, in the comments section because there's a chance that maybe we can do some type of a follow-up interview. And uh, in the meantime, just enjoy the interview and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. So, so anything that you feel like bringing up that people should know about, but I was going to talk about all the things that we talked about, worker shortages, bottlenecks, the 199 new fee, you know, the memberships, how does that apply to people? Um, you know, questions uh, about, um, I, so I got questions from some customers that were pretty good questions just about some of your advanced technology stuff you come up with, things that you can share about your submission formats, um, counterfeit protection, uh, things of that nature. What does it take to be a grader? Uh, what, what are the prerequisites? That's something I'll probably drop on you, but, uh, I don't know if are you are you even involved in the hiring process for any of that stuff or not really? Yeah, so um, I'm starting to get more involved in the hiring process for for grading positions more in the more in the beginning stages um, because here's the thing we're looking for people who are um, hungry, passionate, want to learn, um, uh, want to grow with a uh, a growing company. Um, whether they are a grader or not. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm kind of stepping in and seeing like, okay, you might have, we have plenty of people in this business that have numismatic experience that don't grade and, at all. Um, yes. They, you know, we are looking for people who are passionate about the hobby, whether it's coins, comics, you know, paper money, card stamp, whatever it might be um, that, just want to learn more and want to grow. They don't. Ne they don't necessarily have to be a um, uh, a really experienced grader. And having like I think there's this misnomer in the industry sometimes where people think, well, if I'm going to be in coins, there's only two real avenues that I can participate, and that is to be a dealer, uh, and that could mean working for a large organization or being, you know, sort of working for themselves um, or they're a grader. And I think there's a lot of different opportunities in between. Like right now we're looking for somebody for social media, as an example, that can really, like we don't do a nearly a good enough job with our social media presence. And, um, you know, even on, you know, YouTube, as an example, uh, leveraging our, our brand and, and, um, really getting on uh, answering some of the questions you might ask me today, as yeah. far as, um, what, what happens behind the scenes, kind of bringing people along for the ride, getting them excited about coins, getting them excited about the grading process and what, why it's important. And, um, we, I would really love to find somebody that has some coin experience to, to do that. You know, I, I think it would really benefit. Um, I, I think it would really benefit our business if they um, had that background and that passion for the hobby, the way that, you know, some of us do. Uh, so anyway, that was a long winded answer, but sure, yeah. that's, that's good. Um, I'm going to do, uh, that's actually, we'll, we'll definitely get into the video. We'll, we'll chop at it and put that around because I'm going to do the intro now. Okay. No, it's good. I mean, I don't even know why I have intros because, you know, organic is best. Always, always, always. All right. Welcome. So I'm here today with uh, Andy Salzberg of uh, NGC, but I actually uh, certified collectibles group. Andy is the executive vice president. 
Andy, since none of us really know you personally, can we get like the short version Cliff Notes bio of, of who you are and where you came from? Yeah, sure. So um, a lot of people, I was introduced to the hobby. A lot of people know who my father is, Mark Salzberg. And I knew that uh, I wanted to be a part of the business, but I didn't want to work for him, um, to be to be honest. I just, I wanted to uh, grow and learn on my own. Um you know, without sort of his shadow, quote unquote. So I I worked for a small online uh, retailer. Um, we sold uh, modern coins and eventually bullion at Modern Coin Mart. Mm-hmm. Um, that company was eventually uh, sold to asset marketing and private equity. Um, and uh, so I got a chance to run the Modern Coin Mart business as a standalone business. And that worked really, really well. So we integrated the businesses in 2017-ish. And then my role changed over time. And I uh, took over um, as VP of product development um, and digital marketing and operations uh, for the parent company for asset marketing. And I was, um, so I was with Modern Coinmark for five years and then asset marketing for seven. So a total of 12 with that, those, those businesses. And then I joined um, Certified Collectibles Group in uh, towards the end of April of 2021. Okay, so less less than a year ago. And what is your uh, educational background? I know you said that you grew up with the, within the industry because of your dad. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's actually two pronged. You have a formal college degree in something specific, and also for those of you who don't know who your dad is, if you could just drop a 10 second bio on him. Sure. Yeah. So I, I went through high school and um, I went to uh, Southern Methodist University in Dallas. Um, I um, did not complete my schooling. Um, I majored in uh, business um, accounting and um, economics. Um, but I, so I got through a couple years of school and I, I, I was working in the summers uh, for uh, John Maven at Modern Coin Mart, and um, just felt like that was a good fit for me, and I wanted to get started. So I I went to work for him um, somewhere around 2007. Um, so, uh, but those for those of people that don't know who my father is, Mark Salzberg, he he joined NGC very very early on uh, in its infancy in 1987. Um, and grew the business substantially and was and actually founded certified collectibles group which is sort of the umbrella company over ngc um uh pmg uh cgc which does comics um and we have our trading cards and sports card business so that's sort of the the umbrella company um if you will but you know that's interesting because you 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 ended up following your dad anyway (laughs) right i know how now? What made you want to apply for this uh, for the NGC? The uh, part of me, the CCG position here is that. Like, yeah, you just had a yes. couple people tap you on the shoulder, or. or... Yeah, so um, that's an interesting question. So um, I had, um, you know, my father and Steve Eichebaum, the CEO of Certified Collectibles Group. Um, we had talked on and off for many years about how fun and interesting it would be to work together and um but i I just needed to feel like i had gained enough industry experience and knowledge on my own before making that leap and um and i really loved what i did um the team at asset marketing is incredible and they've got a great business um but i wanted to really um expose myself to the business side of collectibles uh, before I felt like I was ready to add value to certified collectibles group. And once I got there on my own and I felt like the timing was right, I, um, approached, uh, Steve Eichenbaum and, uh, and, and my father. And, uh, we, we had some really good discussions and talked about what the role could look like. And, um, and, um, yeah, it all kind of came together. Well, you know, uh, life is is about relationships after all. And, you know, what's interesting is, you know, people who who watch my channel on YouTube, The Coin Geek, they 
you know, I get geeked out about coins, but anything that's really business related or economics or things like that, I really get into. So, so uh, I'm going to stay on that path just for another quick minute, which is to say, when you moved into, you know, this role now, now you're above not only NGC, PMG, uh, NCS, you've got the, the comics, you got, you got the sports cards, you got the stamps, you've got the paper ephemera, right? How similar or how different are those different companies, those different assets, if you will? How, how different is it from a, a business standpoint and a hobby standpoint? Um, there definitely are similarities and there, are, there is some crossover, but they are definitely, there are, there are uniquenesses to each of those categories for sure from a demographics perspective, from um, a behavior and the way that they collect and the way that they consume information. Um, Interesting. And the the amount of, um, uh, the cadence in which they collect too. Like uh, for example, on the coin side, if you look at um, Morgan's for example, as a category or or modern, uh, United States mint material, you know, if let's take United States mint modern material, if, if a new product comes out of proof silver Eagle, that's something that you're going to want to add to your collection. Um, but on the card side for it's, it's just very different. Um, they could collect or create a collection in sort of an infinite number of ways, whether they collect a specific player or they, they collect, baseball or basketball and or it could be a specific team um you know there there are just um nuances there that are different um and and the size of the markets are different too um so yeah are these are you know the the bottleneck that uh, i know that ngc is not alone in i know the other grading companies have had it too uh is is the same bottleneck that that was kind of created for multiple reasons has that also occurred with uh, these other these other certification companies under your uh, under the CCG umbrella? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, going back to kind of early uh, 2020, uh, the the we were growing at a really fast pace and sort of across all the verticals, but um, the market really took off um over the last couple of years as we know um in and that and that was true across all collectibles i think collectibles have really um come to it, it they're they're now in the spotlight as a true asset class um you know you've had institutional investors come in and look at collectibles as a category it really was seen as um kind of a um I'm not going to use the right word for this, but a um, uh, you know kind of a an offshoot category as an asset class, um, non-traditional. Uh, we'll put it that way. But I really think it's become more uh, mainstream uh, to have collectibles, enjoy collectibles, um, uh, learn more about them, interact, and there, there's a community. Uh, there's a really healthy community of people that discuss. Uh, what they're collecting and and what they enjoy about them. Um, so it's it's just it's to me this is the most exciting time I've ever seen in our space. Um, that's 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 interesting. I'm actually on board with you on that in lots of ways. I think that um, we really have an opportunity to um, get uh, these hobbies strong for the future. Um, I see a lot of people getting back into the hobby. But I actually see a lot of new people in the hobby and uh, specifically to coins, of course. But uh, I think that with the difference in society over just a five year window of time or what have you, even a 24 month window of time, you're seeing a lot of, of opportunities to have young people or new people come into the marketplace uh, just because of how they consume content. So I was really intrigued when when you're saying how the the different categories people consume their information differently you know from yeah. it does a does a coin collector look like a baseball card collector and i got guys who cross over and collect multiple genres so i 
have some understanding of, of what that looks like and what you mean by that. And uh, I do have some guys that view it as a collecting, as a just an asset acquisition kind of thing. But I got a lot of guys that it's just, it's all about the hobby. So there are all kinds of ways to collect, which is, which is really fun to me, I think, especially how I enjoy coins. And of course, you can see I've got other stuff because if you've ever been to a coin dealer that doesn't have anything on the wall, you got to wonder if he just got a divorce or what. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really you, you, when you're, what I found with collectors is that if you collect coins and only coins, you're sort of an outlier. Like a, a lot of people, when they get that collecting bug, they, 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 they look at many different categories. They, they just enjoy the historical component, the, the, the artistic or uh, beauty, the beauty of what they're collecting. Um, there's also obviously a financial component that, that can't be ignored. Um, and they get that bug and they look at all these different uh, categories and, and some of the stuff on your wall is, you know, really neat. And, um, you know, if we had time, I'd ask you about some of them. Like I see Abraham Lincoln there and we I'm might, like, well, you know, I, I, I haven't used any of the, the other services yet, but we may, I may do that. So we'll, we'll see. But before we get into asking questions about, about crossover, um, I just wanted to, I want to ask you from, from the inside view, tell me about some of these bottlenecks that's going on, because as I've told people, my express shipments, you know, they'd be two weeks, now they're two months. My standard shipments were four weeks, now they're four months. You know, mm -hmm. something, you know, what you you understand because you you obviously are looking at the numbers and you don't need to remind you, but but what are the things that from your perspective really um help to cause the bottlenecks that we're seeing across the industry? Yeah, it's it, you know, we're not alone in these challenges. Like if you look at our our major competitor, they've seen some of the same bottlenecks. And I think the, 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 um, the cause of that is really the market exploded in a way that we could just not predict. Um, you know, we are the demand just far outpaced our capacity as a business. And we've had to respond as quickly and as efficiently as we possibly can um, you know, we've had to, our business in terms of certified collectibles group has almost doubled in terms of the number of employees in one year. Um, we're, we've invested in new, uh, space, new technology. And, and so we're having to really grow and adapt at an incredible pace. And, and I'm sure we'll get into, you know, some of the things that we're actually doing about the bottleneck when we might see, um, some light at the end of the tunnel, when, um, those express shipments are being processed in uh, a timely manner um, because, you know, I experienced this, you know, some of the, the same pains you did when I was on the other side of the table and trying to get my submissions back. So I completely understand where you're coming from. So, so in regards to volume, that's a, I mean, I don't know if you have any other, I don't need specific metrics, but you said you're doubling, doubling your staff or uh, what have you. Is, is there a way to quantify demand like it literally did the amount of submissions double in a three-month window of time or do you have a, some way to con convey that um you know i don't have a great way to to give you like a uh, a number off the top of my head um that you could hang your hat on but I, I, if I had to guess, I'd have to really look at the data in order to, to say this with confidence. Um, but the, the, the quantity of coins uh, that we received uh, on a daily or monthly basis, if we had a baseline, let's say in 2019, 2018, uh, and then looking at now, um, we are probably double or more. Um, so that is a significant shift we had you know if you look at our historical performance going back to even let's say not 2020 2019 2018 2017 it was sort of like it, it was a very kind of nice progression and then all of a sudden we went like this <laughs> vertical yeah yeah, um, yeah. so that that's the best way i can describe it and, and some of this isn't even so i mean to be also fair to you you join 
uh, April 2021, the increase had already started, right? Correct. It, so, because somewhere I think around the fall of 2020, from my vantage point, is when you guys got inundated. Because I remember thinking, because for a while your competitor there was they were slower than you, and then all of a sudden it was it was almost like instantly. There was somewhere in that fall of 2020 where I felt like all my submissions hit a wall because I remember having to call because I had a submission and it had been there for a month and it wasn't entered yet. And that was something that I was like, it hadn't happened to me before. So I thought, Oh, uh Oh, did the, did the submission get lost? Like I didn't even check on it. And you know, just, I don't think about it because I'm so used to getting entered. And then I'm looking and I'm like, wait a second, where's the submission. And so, so uh, in fairness to you, I know that a lot of that stuff happened before you even were, were sitting down to try to, to solve the problem. And that gets to the biggest question, which all the collectors ask me, which is when and how do you solve the problem of these bottlenecks? Like yeah. when, when does normal happen? I mean, how, how do you solve this? So uh, the there's really only one way to solve it. Um, and that is through more throughput, you know, more uh, we are processing, grading, shipping, more. And the only way you really do that is through a combination of people, space, technology, um, and and process changes. Uh, so we've looked at all four of those, and I'm really happy with the progress that we're making. We've just recently brought on um, a, a really well-recognized consulting firm to help us understand, because um, you, know, you got to remember that this business was sort of a family operated um, entrepreneurial uh, business. And it's just grown to the point where we, you know, we were figuring out uh, how to operationalize things on our own. And we just grew to the point where we needed help. And, and I think we've done a phenomenal job in terms of bringing on these consultants and leveraging them as much as we possibly can. Um, and I think we're going to start to see not every tier, but but for the most part, um, if you look at U.S., U.S. vintage, um, you know, whether it's modern or vintage, I think we're going to start to see those uh, areas uh, get caught up it pretty quickly. I would say within the next 30 days, we're going to be in a much better spot. Um, and uh, the challenge for us is that the international businesses, the world submissions have, have really exploded. So that's been part of our focus with the consulting firms is how do we really separate out some of these, uh, these lines, if you will. So if you think of world as a line uh, or, or US as a line, because there is a different skill set required from a grading sta standpoint. Um, to really uh, assess and grade those coins, attribute those coins. Um, you know, there's a lot of research involved with certain world products, world coins, if you will. And so we've had to take a look at how we do things differently. And, um, you know, if we can uh, really standardize some of our processes a little bit and and make sure that the world side of things is being handled uh, appropriately that kind of frees us up to focus on our domestic tier uh, tier lines if you will in a in a more efficient manner so the the how, how does having world submissions interfere with us submissions because you you have different graders i assume uh, you know, because uh, I have guys that tell me, well, the bulk submissions are screwing everything up. And I'm like, well, I've talked to guys and you guys actually have, if I'm correct, people who handle bulk submissions are not the same graders who are handling economy. So when I check a box, in general, I'm almost choosing my graders. I, I, that's not the proper way to say it. But, you know, depending on which box I'm checking, that's going to actually go to different graders if I'm checking economy or world or bulk, right? So, so how does the world submissions interfere with or slow down the process for like the U.S. submissions? 
So it's it's actually I should kind of delineate a little bit or clarify. So there's world coins, and then there's submissions that are coming from outside of the United States. Oh, okay. So there's just a very different process required for submissions that are coming from other countries. Mm-hmm. And I won't go into all the all the details from a customs and process standpoint, but there's a lot of additional steps involved in making sure that if all of these uh, submissions come in, they all have to go back out together. Oh. So there's a lot of bringing them, you know, they're splitting off and then they all have to come back together. So optimizing that process and really taking a lot of the, um, the slack out of certain things, um, you know, it, so it doesn't have to travel from, you know, this room to another room. There's a lot of like internal um, um, logistics that we think about internally. Like there's a lot that goes into what we do that people don't see behind the scenes. But um, when you're, uh, when you pick a tier, let's say your domestic customer, um, and you're correct, by the way, there is a bulk uh, or account representative department for very large customers. Most of these uh, customers are submitting modern material, but not in all cases. And there is a grading team um, uh, dedicated to more modern material. Um, so it all depends on the material. We want the best experts reviewing the material that suits their skill set. Um, some graders have that unique ability to, uh, the, or the expertise and the background in both U.S. and world, but that's uh, that's a rare instance. Um, most of the time, they've specialized in uh, certain categories, and um, that's when I say world has is a little bit more challenging. It's because it's been more challenging to find the talent, the grading talent that we really trust and feel like we can associate with our brand. And we, we, you know, they're, they're up to our standards. So, you know, that's again, why I said earlier, like we're looking for, you know, hungry, passionate, talented people who have those expertise. How many, uh, how many grading positions do you guys currently have open, so to speak, that you're trying to fill? I'd almost wouldn't put a number on it. Um, we're always you looking to find for the, people, right? Yeah. We just need to find people. One it's, at a it's, time. Come on in the door one at a time. Yeah. One at a time. I mean, like I said before, um, you know, even if, you know, you, you have those expertise and, and you want to be a grader, that's great. Um, but even if you don't want to be a grader, we're still looking for people that have passion for this industry and, and can help us in a variety of different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because I know from my vantage point, there's a difference between, uh, you know, the company you're at and your, your whatever number one competitor, however you want to put it. Uh, I, I almost feel like I'm avoiding saying Voldemort here, which isn't fair, but, <laughs> but, but it doesn't matter. Everyone knows who it is. So, but, uh, um, I see, I, I just, I derail my own train of thought when I start making jokes about things. Um, so when it comes to some of the things that uh, you talked about earlier, like you're talking about, you know, digital marketing, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, whatever you want to use to get your, your message across and your um, image out there. I, I will say what's intriguing to me, and I'll just speak from my perspective. And uh, actually, I'm going to step back one half second and just tell people, you and I got together because I did a video about the $199 fee that NGC is putting or CCG is putting towards all, right? It's from CCG to all of its sub uh, companies, right? And I just made a video about it and was talking about my perspective. And uh, someone got it to you and you're nice enough to reach out, which was great. Um, so I, I talk a little bit just from my perspective on things. Uh, so absolutely the feedback that I'm getting from, for myself and from customers is the technology race, um, a little bit of the, of the online presence, the Instagram presence. I understand that because I know PC Jess is all over Instagram. Um, you know, they kind of have a personality that's working with them on some stuff I can see. 
Um, there's, there's always been this cultural difference between like, you got laid back Florida and then you've got like uptown California. Like when I go to the shows, this really cracked me up. When I go to the shows, there's like a different sense of like, it's almost like flip flops and shorts and beach versus like, I'm going to a ballroom thing. And I, anyway, I feel more comfortable in the beach setting just so you know, but that's a whole nother, a whole nother thing. Um, more, uh, more feedback for you also our auction archive data. I'm sure you guys are working on all this. Uh, I'd probably want to do a whole video just on the tech questions around grading, but we can save that that for a different time. But I do have questions about, um, you know, online submissions and how that can help affect the bottleneck. Because you mentioned there's people, and people is the big thing that's hard for you to overcome. But you said you're working on tech, and tech is coming along. So can you speak to some of the tech that's going to help the bottleneck and help the process? Yeah. yeah so um, online submission forms are a huge uh, um, uh, focus for us. Um, we've had, uh, obviously, you know that we've had to stand up some new verticals over the last um, uh, year, two years. And so our development uh, capabilities or resources were just spread a little bit thin. And um, we also kind of looked at, well, how critical is it? I mean, it, um, we've now come to realize how critical online submission forms are for um, our customers on the NGC side. So that's where our focus is going to be. Um, and, and I would expect to see uh, an online submission form, um, you know, in the next six to nine months. And then the reason I say where I give such a sort of a big gap there is because our online, our submission process and the way that we, um, and all the services that we offer our customers, it's incredibly complicated. Um, if you think about all the different tiers and whether you want photo vision or it's a reholder or it's a mechanical error, or it's, you know, there, there are so many things to consider and, we're also um, really working hard on our backend system and how this all ties together. So it's it's just going to take what it's going to take because we don't want to put out a product that is subpar. We really want this to be easier. Um, something you know, our, our customers are used to this this submission form, uh, and they've been using it for a long a long time. So this has got to be incrementally better. Um, it can we cannot take a step backwards and make things more challenging for both our customers and for us internally. So um, but I think it will really make the process more efficient, um, both for our customers and for us, because there's so many things that we can automate um, with the help of technology. So um, we are looking at how technology can help us across the board and and obviously you know we were going to talk about this at some point but I'll just you know bring it up now that obviously we were purchased and acquired by Blackstone um, last year so they've really been an incredible partner an incredible advocate of exploring technology they've we've been able to really access a different level of resource through them um, so we have a lot of projects in flight right now. Um, and, and I'm sure we can talk about some of those specifics at a, at a later date. Yeah. Well, the, the, to the, to the very, very specific topic of, of having the submissions be automated, you know, I just want the viewers to think about this, you know, and I, I love, I love filling out the paper forms. I'm old school, right? So, uh, I'll, I'll learn to get over that. But after I fill out that paper form, someone at NGC has to enter it mm -hmm. system. So yes. It's like every last form that's already been filled out basically has to be put into a computer. And so, I mean, I think about the, the thousands and thousands of man hours, probably a month that it takes to do that data entry. Because uh, that, that, that's something that will really help with, with, in my opinion, with the bottleneck. Once once that gets up up and going, uh, you know, onward and upward. So I'm I'm excited for that. I know it'll be a process. Um, 
you know, the, the Blackstone merger is interesting because the, now that predates you or you got on board the same time they did. I'm trying to remember. I actually came on board uh, about two and a half months uh, before the um, uh, transaction was finalized. Okay. So, which means it was already in the works, of course, because nothing takes five minutes, right? So, I mean, yeah, it takes a while. Right. Just buy a house and see how much paperwork it is. I've bought a business before and it took months and months and months. And I, I so I understand uh, that that level of, of when it's whatever, a half a billion dollar transaction, uh, you know, that probably has a couple more lawyers involved than we did. So <laughs> um, just, just a few. So, but it's cool. What, what I'm glad to hear is just your, your comments about partnership. Um, is there anything else about having Blackstone that's really opened your eyes besides the technology thing? What, what other ways do you see that they really helped uh, CCG and NGC? Um, there are so many ways that they've helped. I mean, they're, um, first of all, we, we have uh, phenomenal leadership here at CCG. Like I've come to, I've learned so much already from Steve Eichenbaum, Max Spiegel, Mike Brown, you know, you, there's just, there's too many to name um, that have, that have also are really tenured. They've been here a long time, um, which speaks to the culture that we have here. So what I love about Blackstone is they've allowed us to retain our sense of self and who we are, but at the same time, really try and supercharge a lot of the, the things that we've thought about. What, what would we love to be able to do? And, and, you know, they've really wanted us to think outside the box, like um, stop yeah. thinking in terms of, of what you could have done with the resources you had think about what you could do if, if you had anything, if you had, if there was no, uh, if there was no limit on the checkbook. Um, and, and obviously there, there, there is a limit on the checkbook. <laughs> I want to be clear about that. There, no, there no, I understand the concept though. It's that's a, that's a mental exercise. shift. And yes. well, you know, to ask someone that, I mean, I do that with people all the time when they talk about how they're stuck in their job or something I'm like, well, if money didn't matter, what would you do? what would you do today if it didn't really matter what you made or what you, where you lived or things like that. And if they actually take the time to engage in that thought process, it's really interesting the things that they can come to or come up with that maybe they didn't even know about themselves. And the same thing happens in business because business is nothing but a collective of humans, right? So when you sit down and, and you have that type of a conversation, it's really great to have people from the outside come in and be like, you know, uh, this is good, and there's other things that you can think about. And uh, so I'm I'm excited to hear all that, and it'll be really interesting to see where this marriage leads. I know a lot of people uh, were nervous about the buyout. And when I say a lot of people, I don't mean internally for your organization. I mean externally, because I talk to a lot of people who, when there's a buyout within an industry, a niche industry like like collectibles, they really get concerned about what that can do, what can happen to that that company, which is basically being acquired. And you know, uh, so I'm glad to hear that there's so many good things in the in the works. Um, I'm I'm going to because of time just start wrapping this up. I would like to have maybe again sometime a conversation very specific okay. to grading and this can be about ngc and this can be about a lot of your other paper assets too your pmgs and your your stamps and everything else i'm intrigued about the uh technology that is is coming out and that is being considered and and where it can go and, and maybe it can be a little bit of a theoretical discussion as much as anything else um you know the the funny thing is like one of my big questions from one the reason we're talking is because of the the letter that you guys had sent out, CCG sent out, and I read was that the uh, one hundred ninety nine dollar fee for dealers, right? And so this is actually mirroring what collectors already have something similar, so to speak, right? If mm -hmm. they want to send stuff in, they have to have some type of membership. Um, the one thing, and you and I, we spoke when we spoke briefly on the phone before, mentioned this, so I got to bring this up because I was about to forget. My question was. Is that 199 fee only for NGC, or do I now have access to all the other things under the CCG umbrella? Yeah, so um, 
to be clear, yeah, the, the $199, $199 fee is, is for certified collectibles group as a whole. So any of the verticals that um, we currently service uh, or collectible categories we service, um, there is still a, um, a very simple vetting process that we go, or a process, I should say, that we go through because you've already been vetted as a dealer. Um, but to be clear, you, if you wanted to submit to comics or uh, sports cards, you would not pay that $199 fee again. That, that fee is to cover all of our, our brands. Um, uh, so that's a great question. And, um, and so want to make that clear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I have, I, I know how much meetings are and <laughs> how often they are and what your time's like, because, you know, I have limited time just running a very small company uh, having a family and doing all the other things. And so I really appreciate your time today. And uh, if we can, again, down the road, talk about some, some other topics, I'd, I'd appreciate that again. Yeah, this was fantastic. I mean, um, I think that we've got to do a better job as a, a business really engaging with our customers and, and not having as, like you said, in the beginning of the call, there was just a little bit of a a veil or some mystery there. Well, I think the more we educate people about our process, I think the more that they'll find um, credibility because of, you know, I see what we do on a day to day basis and I see how great this team is and um, what this company is doing and what it's capable of doing in the future. And um, I just couldn't be more excited to be in our space right now. Um, it's just a really exciting time. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, all the best in Florida and we'll be in touch again. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Go ahead and leave your comments down below and uh, share the video with people. If you think that there's somebody in the coin collecting community that needs to hear this or should hear this, to have an understanding of what goes on behind the veil at NGC and CCG. Thanks so much for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.